5356 rod has too much magnesium to machine. Hi guys, Kay. In this video, we're going to see if that's true or not. So I have a piece of 3 16 thick 6061 aluminum. This is a really common material for machinists to use for making parts. And I'm going to run a bunch of beads with a 5356 rod and a 4043 rod. And then I'm going to mow them off in the mill and see how they machine. See if this guy knows what he's talking about or not. And I'm using the variable amperage TIG button that I sell on my website, this finger controller. It's pressure sensitive and it works just like a foot pedal. You press harder and you get more amperage. So this is really nice, you know, for all of TIG welding really almost. This first weld, the part's cold, so you gotta give it quite a bit more amperage to get the bead width you want. And then as the part gets hotter, you start wanting to use less amperage or you overheat your part and get a hazy looking weld that's too hot and too wide. So without, you know, without a foot pedal or the tick button, you're, you would have to go back to your machine and slowly start setting the max amperage down every time you weld to get it exactly how you want it. Or spend a lot of time wasting time in between each weld bead to let it cool down, if that makes sense. And I much prefer this over kicking a foot pedal around. It's a lot easier. Okay, that was 53.56 rod. Now I'm going to 5356 rod, so we'll mark that. The five. And then that last bead is shinier because the frosting, you know, every time you put a bead on that etched layer from AC welding, frosts over the width of the rest of them. So here's some career advice for you guys that are getting serious about TIG welding aluminum or TIG welding anything really. You ought to get to know some machinists because, you know, everybody makes mistakes and I've saved some machinists butts several times where they're like, you know, hours into machining some complex part and they dive in too far and screw it up. So the way to fix it is you get a TIG welder to come in and fill in whatever hole they screwed up on or whatever slot that's too deep or offset so they can resurface it and, you know, make it the right way. So yeah, I, had, I advise you guys out there to get to know some machinists, you know, become friends with them to get their word of mouth going around that you're a TIG welder so you can get, get some work and save their butt from time to time. Okay, now it's cold to the touch. I'm gonna face this off and see which side machines better. I'm gonna use WD-40 as cutting fluid because it pisses off some know-it-all machinists.
I'm gonna call that good because I don't want to go too deep and get back down into the base metal. You know, there's a few little divots here, but this will be good enough for demonstration purposes. Okay, let's see how it did. My mill's pretty wore out, so you know, no matter how good I try to dial it in, you can't get the fancy cut marks coming from each side. Kind of hard to show this on camera with the glare. You can see there's definitely a color difference. You know, this side's shinier than this side. And to me, this side looks like it machined a lot cleaner. See how that one's kind of got some rough stuff going on in it. And there we go. This side's the 5356 rod, and that's the 4043. So I don't know where that machinist got his information wrong or if I'm missing something, but if I was doing a repair for a machinist, I'm going to be using 5356 rod if it's compatible with the base metal. Hopefully you guys find that useful. Thanks for watching. If you got more myths you want busted, let me know below.